Good evening and welcome to the January 2023 Board of Trustees meeting for the Penfield Public Library. We're glad that you're here with us either by PCTV or YouTube, whichever you are watching. I'm officially calling the meeting to order. First item on the agenda, uh, we'd first like to welcome uh, the new trustees. Uh, Justin, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Justin Araki, uh, one of the new trustees. Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. Uh, I, yeah, I do title insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Harish. Hi, I'm Harish Nayak. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, one of the first orders uh, items of agenda that we have to complete today is just the approval of minutes from our last meeting and financial report. Uh, I officially call, um, can I move to mo What's that? Can I move to approve the yes. minutes? Yes. A second. All in favor? It's approved. These are the December 20th meeting minutes and the January 3rd special meeting minutes. We should do them in two separate motions. Yeah. Okay, then can I move to uh, approve the December minutes? Thank I'll you. second. Jennifer seconds. I'll approve. Can I move to approve the January minutes? I'll second. I'll approve. Perfect, thank you. Um, <clears throat> public participation. We can do the financial, financial reports. Report. Nope, financial reports, sorry. So um, we'll just go right to the budget summary. This budget summary has all the data through December. Um, so this is just a recap. We had a wonderful year. Our revenues came in line and expenses were 7% better than budget. Um, so very happy about controlling expenses. <clears throat> Um, the monthly balance sheet also looked all right. The gift and memorial fund was largely unchanged. Um, there were a couple CDs that were renewed over the last last month, I believe it was. Um, but everything, all our funds are with Family First and Canandaigua. That's it. Can we move to approve? the financial reports. I'll move to approve. Jennifer Second. seconds. All approved. Do you know who seconded? No, I'm sorry, who seconded it? Justin. Second Thank it. you, Justin. Okay, then we just have the uh, public participation. As a reminder, this meeting is, uh, this recording is available on penfieldtv.org or YouTube, whatever site you prefer. Um, Linda, I know you're the town liaison. Uh, anything to report? No, first welcome Justin, Anna, and Harish. I think it's you know exciting having three new members to participate in the Library Board of Trustees. From the town of Penfield standpoint, we are in the midst of doing priorities and goals with our different departments. So like, tomorrow night we're having communications. So every night this month and into February, we're going to have different departments come and speak to us about what their goals and priorities are for the year before our regular, regularly scheduled meeting. And uh, beyond that, you know, Debbie Draws, acting supervisor, while well, Marie Sinti supervisor has been away and she's doing a good job and, uh, you know, things are moving along. I don't have anything, you know, outstanding that's happening that I need to report. If you have any questions about things that are happening in the town that I could address or get back to, you, you know, I'm happy to uh, do so. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, Judy, I know you're the liaison for the Friends of the uh, Penfield Public Library. Yes. Anything to report? I had a um, lovely <laughs> conversation with Mary, um, Mary Maley, on, um, over the past, over the weekend. Um, the Friends are really moving quite along. The Friends of the Penfield Public Library are, are the group of people who are responsible for all the programs that happen at, um, in the library. And um, so they are also going to proceed with a second book sale wow. this year. Um, and it's going to be 
uh, let me see, what did you say? May 5th and 6th? And May 5th, 6th, and 7th, I believe. Um, setup was going to be on the 4th. They're very excited. It's going to be a limited one and include children's books. And it's only going to be in the Brayman room. So my understanding is that it's only children's books. Mm -hmm. Teen books as well. And teen books. And okay. other materials. Okay. Um, and so they're always looking for volunteers. So, you know, please let them know um, if you are interested in volunteering. And they're also, um, they've had a renewal. You know, we had that time where they were really kind of in trouble. Um, but they've had a renewal in interest, and they're going to have a membership drive um, on February 6th through the 18th. And they're going to set up a table in the library um, manned by one of the Friends members. And they're looking to recruit new members. So um, Rhonda gave them permission. They're very excited. That's a new you know, idea for them. So we'll hope that um, they have been a very static kind of group. And the same women that have devoted years and hours um, are, have been the foundation of this group. So they're, uh, so they're looking for, you know, some, some new faces and new ideas. And they have, you know, they have that. Um, they're also having their annual meeting on March 24th. And um, they'll have more information at the February board meeting to share with us. And, um, Mary won't be there. She's going to be on a cruise. Lucky <laughs> you, Mary. Um, so um, she will, you know, send more information about how that looks. But they're, you know, that's outstanding for the friends. Mm -hmm. You know, they were. They it should were be noted the friends are giving us over thirty thousand dollars in funding for 2023. I mean, they work really hard to make these sales a success. So we thank them. So if they have the children's, will they also continue a children's at the September one? Yes. And okay. we do ask the public that if you have any books to donate um, for this extra sale, now would be the time. Bring them into the library. You can bring them in any time to the circulation desk. If you have a large load of books, check the Friends website to find out what time to bring those. But if it's just a box or two, you can bring them in any time we're open. And are they asking for like games and puzzles for children as well as books? They will take that, yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's good to know. I just cleaned out all our games that <laughs> we don't play anymore. So, <laughs> you know, in, in good condition that they can sell. Right. Sure. All the, all the pieces have to be there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a challenge. <laughs> Rhonda, out of curiosity, I know uh, with the past book sale, they would get the volunteers from the high school. Yes. Any concerns, or are they going to be able to leverage the high school again for the second book sale? They have addition? a couple of teams they're speaking to right now. Nice. Okay. And I know the high school kids use it as part of their um, senior community service, yeah. um, and so it's a real big attraction for you know the juniors and the seniors that need to. And I've seen them in there. They, mm. Good thing they can haul those books. <laughs> they're huge and empty. Rhonda, my daughter's on the in the Leo's Club at the high school, and I'll mention it to her so that she can bring it up to their next meeting in case that's not one of their contacts right now yet. Say that again. The Leo's Club is a service organization. Okay. Do you know if they're working with them or you don't, I don't know? Don't know. Okay, I'll mention it. My daughter's in that. I'll mention it to her okay. to mention it to their yes, advisor. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> So that's all I have to say from Mary. Awesome. I'm Thanks. sure she'll fill us in with more information. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Judy? Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Um, just going to go through the committees here. Uh, Naraj, anything to report in the finance? I know you just did the finance no. reports. Excuse me, Brett. We do have to approve the new committees, just as oh. they are written on the agenda. And we have a motion to yeah, maybe approve maybe. the people in the committees as the committee members. Yeah, maybe have a motion to approve the new committee members. A Jennifer seconds. All approve. 
I'm sorry, who seconded? I second. Thank you, Nora. All right, um, Naraj, nothing to report from the Finance Committee? Nothing. All right. Anna, I know you're new. Anything <laughs> to report? Uh, no, just that we do have one opening for a trustee position, so I think important to start working on that and finding somebody to fill that position. And Anna, we do have one new um, staff member, a library page, Gabe Adelini. Gabe is um, an adult who's been volunteering with the library for about five months now and um, is now transitioning into a paid role at the library. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Jennifer, anything to report on? We, we need a vote, I'm so sorry. We need a um, motion to appoint Gabe. To the oh, I'm sorry. Do I have a motion to appoint? That's okay. I'm so sorry about motion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll second. Jennifer seconds. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry. Do we need to vote too? Or just, that's just, okay. Okay. Just a motion. Yeah. Anyone up? Yeah. What's that? Just all there. All in favor? There you go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, strategic planning, Jennifer, anything to report? No, nope, not this time. Uh, bylaws, Justin, I know you're new. Uh, nothing to report at this time. Okay. But. So, um, Justin, you, before you came on board, um, we, the previous bylaws policy committee, had worked really hard on a revision of the personnel policy manual or the employee manual, which you all have copies in your documents. Um, so this is being brought to you this month for simple discussion, and the hope is then that next board meeting we would be able to vote yes or no to, to revise this policy and put it into action. So um, you should have it in your documents. If you have it electronically, you'll see that the changes that we are proposing um, are in color. And any print that you see that's not in color is the former policy. So um, you must have questions, I'm sure, for us. Are we no. voting on that next We're month? voting yes. next time, so we should discuss it this time. So if there's okay. anything you want revised again, something that you don't feel should have been revised, um, we should discuss now so I can edit it in time for next month. OK. Oh, we don't want this one. How about if I talk a little bit about some of the changes that the committee discussed? Okay, great. Um, some things are just language. For example, at the library, we don't offer overtime to our employees, and we don't offer comp time, but we do offer flex time, which is um, the difference being, let's say you're a full-time librarian, you're supposed to work 37 and a half hours per week, but sometimes you're scheduled on a Saturday or a Sunday, so you need to flex during that pay period so that you still add up to 37 and a half. So we're just changing the language for that to make sure it's, it's correct. Um, there are pronouns being used in the old policy that are no longer considered uh, respectful. So we did change all the pronouns from he and she to they and their and them. Um, and that is, was put in place as per town of Penfield HR protocol. We do have some part-time employees, mostly at the CERC desk, who have been here for years, who don't work um, enough hours to be paid for sick time or vacation time. These are people who have been with us for a very long time, and if they become sick, they, they simply go without that salary. So I do think it's important that every long-term long employee who commits um, him or herself or themselves to our library should, should have at least, at the very least, sick time and, and potentially some vacation time. And it would all be, you know, based on the, the full-time employees and it would be prorated. It's not like they're getting anything extra. They wouldn't, but they should get a little, I feel they should get a little something and the committee agreed with me. Um, we did a little language um, on performance appraisal that was not in the employee manual. I thought that our staff members should know that once a year they will get a performance, they will participate in a performance appraisal. It's only fair for them and us to have something in writing every year. 
Um, staff members should be able to take a break when we can, um, when we're not too busy. Um, and right now there's nothing in the employee manual saying that they can take that break and just have a cup of coffee or use the restroom. So that's in there. Um, right now, if the library closes for emergency reasons, such as the recent snow days, um, part-timers did not get paid. They just went without. Um, mm. I think that it's important if somebody is committed to working a shift, then that person should be paid. And we wrote it so that the emergency would last up to two days pay. And then if it's more than two days, we would talk to the board and decide how to how to proceed with those employees. Um, we did discuss potentially having the library close a little early on Thanksgiving Eve Eve and New Year's Eve were very, very quiet. And I think this is a little bonus for the staff who doesn't, this, our staff members do not get all of the paid hol federal holidays. They don't get all of the paid holidays that the town staff members do because we're a library and we should be open for the students when they are available and need us. But it would really be a nice perk for us staff, staff members who are cooking dinner or getting ready or maybe traveling out of town to be able to leave a little early on those two days. Um, right now we have a policy where staff members can accrue 35 vacation days from year to year. And that's been a really big hit for our budget when somebody retires to pay that out. The town allows up to 15 vacation days, um, which is a little bit more fiscally responsible. So I'd like you to consider um, changing that. Um, those are the big ones. Most of the others are simple language. Um, but they're in red, and you can read them. We can discuss these changes now, or you can kind of think about them for the month. And we don't have to approve this next month. We can approve this maybe in March if you come back with ideas. There's no real rush here. Um, and it is a very long policy. It, it will take time for you to read it and really okay. absorb the differences. But again, you know, when you leave here, the changes are in red. Can I, I do have um, a yes. question. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to talk yeah, about absolutely. it. But um, I noticed under holidays that the library gets eight paid holidays, but like for Juneteenth, the entire county was closed. Um, and I know it is decided among all the libraries, but the Monroe County Library is closed. And I'm just wondering why, you know, or even January 2nd this year, which was declared the legal holiday for New Year's Day. So I'm, I'm wondering why we don't pass that, that on, the town, our town is closed. Um, so actually, I think you were absent the day that we discussed the federal, the, the paid holidays for 2023. The board approved the list of holidays. I did bring up Juneteenth, and I did give you a list of the libraries that would be closing on June, on that date, and um, you, this board chose to be open. It was a choice that the board made. Um, we can certainly change it mid-year, or we can change if it's 2024 if you feel strongly mm -hmm. about it. I can put it on the agenda for next month. Um, We're open on Martin Luther King. Yeah. It, it's, it's yes, it's, it, that, it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit of a sticky point because educational organizations right. like public yes. libraries have traditionally been open for those students who mm -hmm. need to do their work. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, is it really fair to our staff? I, I, it's a question that we need to discuss. Would you like us to put that on the agenda? For I think it's month. something that also we need to consider as a respectful um, gesture on our part also. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Anybody have any comments, <laughs> questions? I think it's a fine line where we are a public library where, you know, there are students who do depend on us and would like to access our resources. So, you know, maybe it's one of those things we can look at more half days 
uh, on those uh, particular days to kind of accommodate both uh, areas. Um, any other thoughts from any of the new members? Do we have any idea how many people last year came to the library on Juneteenth? Juneteenth was so new last year. Mm. Um, I, I, I actually spoke to, the, when I spoke to the board last, was it October? I think it was October that we brought it up. Um, I did tell you that we did get a complaint from a community member who felt it was inappropriate for us to be open. Um, I imagine as time goes on and the holiday becomes more a part of our culture that we would get additional complaints, but we are open Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Um, what other libraries Columbus Day or are open? Open Columbus Day. Day. Yeah. Open President's Day. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have this history of being open on federal holidays. It's usually big days, too, for programs because there's no school. We typically do educational <clears throat> programs for children mm -hmm. on those days. And that's the public service work where we're supposed to be there for the community. It's the middle of exam week, too, for high school students. Right. Yeah. I do have one question. Like, yeah. Rhonda, on some of these holidays that we don't necessarily observe as part of operations, are any part of the operations affected by other parts, whether it be part of the county library system or other uh, We are affected, the absolutely. We're affected um, when the county, when, when MCLS, our library system is closed, we don't get delivery. So we don't, the holds don't come, we can't send them out. Um, we can't um, call at the libraries, which we routinely do, you know, to ask them to look for a book on a shelf or an item on a shelf. So yeah, we are affected, but um, we also do draw community members from other towns because they come to the one that's open. <clears throat> Have any staff members complained? Of course. Okay. <laughs> do the staff members complain about the other holidays? federal holidays having to be work? There are, there are many staff members who feel they should take off, but they are allowed to take floating holidays um, or personal days. We would never say no, especially if it's an important holiday for that person. So we already have a system built in where they can take off the holidays that they would want? They can, yes. Linda, you were gonna say oh, something? I was just gonna say that this is an opportunity to educate the the community about what Juneteenth means because not everyone understands. And often libraries are the impetus to get that the communication out there to, um, and if, <clears throat> if, if our library is open, not only is it good for the kids that are having, um, you know, exams and so on like that, but the younger ones, they get to understand what it's all about because there's, you know, library's been awesome as far as like Martin Luther King Day, for instance, you know? I mean, that's a time that the schools aren't open, but the library's open to to educate. explain things, so so it's an asset for our community to have the library open with programming to explain why the holiday is mm -hmm. and uh, educate the community. That's just my two cents. Well, I think when you talk about Col Columbus, who is no longer called Columbus, um, and you talk about Martin Luther King, not every Entity within the within the county is closed. Some are, some aren't. But you know, I I think of this holiday of January second that the entire everybody was closed on that day as the celebration for January first for New Year's Day. So I'm not saying all of them, but I, I think that they could be looked at individually. The same thing with Juneteenth you know, for the U of R to close because it's Juneteenth um, is, was, is, a huge, uh, is a huge piece for them. So I don't know. I, it's just, I, I was just wondering, it was just a, you know, just a question. So uh, I, I, I think we just need to know, are we looking at 2023 or 2024? Because if it's 2023, we need to put it on the agenda as an item to discuss. If it's 2024, then we'll bring this up again in you know September, October, when we do the following year's holidays. And we can then really have a discussion again. Any preferences? Well, you said that w this was discussed in October. It was. So I'm wondering if we should let some time go by, be yeah. open this Revisit year, this and then in 2024. Talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so revisit it toward the end of the year, uh, for the year 2024. That's fine. And then 
when Juneteenth occurs, I, I can collect data and find out who was open, who wasn't open, how the community feels about us being open, and how right. we, how well we were used that day. And even how how many patrons come, you know, happen to come on that day. Yeah, sure, just, we can absolutely do that. Just for curiosity. And then we'll have two years worth of data because you have it from this previous year too. Right, we can do that. And that would be a good observation as we start reviewing this for uh, 2024, looking at all those holidays and saying, hey, how was MLK Day that day compared to these last two years of data uh, to really have a better standing of, you know, what we potentially should be doing for 2024. All oh, right, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, because I know you mentioned, uh, Rhonda, you know, closing early for like Thanksgiving Eve or, you know, the day before Thanksgiving will absolutely make sense. Mm -hmm. The question is, you know, where's that time frame? Right. You know, if you're seeing, you know, two o'clock beyond it was completely dead, well, maybe we do one o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Ron, I know you, uh, on, on the agenda here, we have the trustees, we all have to sign, uh, review and sign the annual ethics and conflict of uh, interest statements. Is there anything else to add there? Did we get everybody's signature? Okay. I just have to sign mine, I'll get it to you. Yep, no, you okay. can give them to me at the end of the okay. meeting as well, that's fine. Perfect. Jude, I know you spoke earlier uh, as the liaison for uh, the Penfield, uh, <clears throat> the Friends of the Library. Anything else from a communication standpoint? Any uh, communication at, from the public? Not at this point, but I think the communication committee has um, a more integral role that maybe we can, you know, as as this as the committee that I'm the chair of, we can kind of sit down and talk about where and what kinds of things we want to push, have more communication on. I appreciate it. Anybody got any, any ideas they want us to? I, I was thinking about the Library Foundation. Mm -hmm. you, have a, you have a Friends of the Library, but, and I was at the meeting with Rhonda uh, two weeks ago, I guess. It was um, a Zoom meeting. But they were, you know, they were talking about having their wine tasting. Mm -hmm. They're having a wine tasting on February 11th, it's a Saturday. And that is to raise money that they will go to the library. And, um, you know, so that's a supportive of the library. And that's a, it's an opportunity to communications outreach to the public that there's a wine tasting that will benefit the library. But right. also it's a communication between you, the Board of Trustees, sure. and the Library Foundation, as well as the Friends of the Library as two integral organizations that support the library and want to give money to the library, which is so important. So, yep. that's, that's just good. something for communications. Well, that, you know, yeah, that's a good, uh, you know, that's a good point. Um, and we certainly want to advocate, mm -hmm. you know, all the opportunities that are available to us and who we can, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it kind of goes hand in hand, I think, with strategic planning also, mm -hmm. um, and right. how we work together for that, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it'll be a thinking cap kind of thing. <laughs> I appreciate it, Judy, thank you. Uh, Rhonda, we now have our on to the director's report. Yeah, sure, and we can start with the meeting that we went to with the foundation, the, it was a Zoom meeting. Um, so the foundation does want to get its name out and, be, <laughs> and have its mission understood by the community and as such, they, they would like to come to one of our board meetings. They're thinking maybe March, April, May, we can invite them to speak and just um, yeah. be a part of our meeting if that's possible. Um, they are considering donating a product to the library. It's called Canopy Plus. I don't know if you've heard of Canopy. Canopy is known for streaming movies. Um, several of the, the local libraries do have it including Central and Pittsford. Um, I do have experience with it. Both my previous libraries had Canopy. This is Canopy Plus, which is slightly different. Canopy is, um, is a streaming service where, much like Hoopla, which we added last year. So with these streaming services, what happens is um, the library is charged per, per download, 
per episode, per ebook, per, per audio book, and it can be quite expensive. The foundation is considering donating Canopy Plus, which is slightly different. Basically, it's a um, it's a curated list of movies on a subject, such as um, world cinema. And um, you get about 400 movies with unlimited streaming. So they are considering donating this to the library, and we had a long discussion about this product. Um, they're meeting this week to make their final decision, but we hope that they donate this. Um, Great. It would be good for us, and it would be good for our community, and it would be good for the foundation, because every time somebody would click on it, they would see donated by the Penfield Library Foundation, and they'd get their name out. So yeah, what a great we're way looking to get at that. Name out. Um, the Children's Furniture um, Project has begun, um, and I want to nice. just thank the town of Penfield um, staff who, who they, they, they came and they, in a van, and they picked up the furniture and they took it all the way to Fabrics and, um, fabrics and, fabrics fabrics. and Findings. And um, so kind of them. It saved us a lot of money and we appreciate that. So that's begun. It takes about eight weeks. If you have a chance, go look in the children's room. Um, we've moved things around, have a little more space for play, um, which is always good. And um, it actually looks good. Um, we closed our 2022 budget. We opened our 2023 budget. Material budgets have been distributed and the librarians have, have begun spending, so that's great. We do have a very special speaker on May 18th as a result of the grant um, that was provided by Senator Brook. Um, this is the collaboration between the Pittsford Library, the Central Library, and the Penfield Library, and we have, um, we're, not, we're not supposed to announce it yet, but, um, I'll say the author of The Personal Librarian <laughs> is coming <laughs> May 18th. It's super exciting. If you, very famous if you look author. at um, <clears throat> the top 20 checkouts of mm -hmm. 2022, this author is on the list. So there's a super, super popular fiction author in our community, and we're just like over the moon excited. Um, we did get a $50 donation from um, one of our loyal patrons for a staff party, and we're going to have a, a brunch on Thursday, yes. so thank you. And the friends, in addition to all the programming, are donating in 2023 the New York Times database, which I think I talked to you a little bit yep. about that it's coming. It's right now available in the building for us to practice with, and it, it's pretty amazing, I have to say. So what you'll have to do to access the database, which should be ready and available next week, um, you'd, go to our, you'd go to our website, and you'd click on databases, and you click on New York Times, and you get 24 hours of the New York Times. So you could do it every single day. There's no limit. It's an amazing product. And um, not only will it help our database stats, it's going to help our website stats, because you have to go there every day, and you'll see what else is going on. So that's <laughs> kind of a win-win. So really exciting stuff happening. Any questions? How? <clears throat> How does Canopy Plus work? Do you take it out? Is there a, a like you use your your um, library yeah. card to take out? We haven't we haven't we haven't gotten to that point, and it's Just a curious. brand new product. You know, I, I actually learned of it when I went to the conference. So thank you for allowing me to go to the conference. <laughs> um, so it's brand new. So I, I assume it's going to be kind of like Hoopla, where we'll have it on our website. You'll click on a link. You'll put your library card number in, oh, okay. and yeah. it'll be approved for downloads. I assume, but I really don't know yet. Right. So I know wondering. Hoopla. We ha I'm able to have it right on my phone with Canopy Plus. amazing. Yeah, with Canopy Plus, do the same thing. You're thinking? I think, I think so. I okay. believe so. I mean, it's going to be an app, so I assume so. Makes it very efficient. <laughs> yeah, Hoopla is amazing. And, you know, Hoopla was given to us in 2022 by the Friends, and then we took it on with our operational budget in 2023, and we'll have it now going forward. It costs us, it's expensive. It costs us about $300 a month, but um, it's really popular, and it brings a, a more diverse um, set of e-books, audio books, graphic novels, movies, TV shows than we would otherwise have. So this is a great product. So that's three hundred dollars a month, and then we get charged per download on that one. That's including. Oh, that's including. It's it's adding up to about two fifty three hundred per month. Um, as more and more people learn about Hoopla, the price will of course go up. Yeah. But we mm -hmm. ha we have a budget set up with them where we can't exceed a certain amount, so we're okay. Mm. Okay.
Okay. Well, if there's any more questions, Rhonda, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Uh, then we're on to uh, new business. Uh, <clears throat> You know, one of the things that we've talked about or we emailed, um, you know, recently were just uh, time changes for these board meetings. Um, right now we're meeting at 7 o'clock uh, every third Tuesday. Uh, the town has suggested uh, that we meet at 6.30 just to help with uh, staffing uh, and allowing uh, the staff members, uh, such as the Anna and Rhonda and the security guards uh, and the production team here as well, uh, to allow them to go home a little earlier. Um, any thoughts or uh, ideas on this, guys? I support the time Me too. change. I like it. Makes sense. Okay. If I might, the town board meetings have gone at 6.30. You know, it was a little transitional. You know, it was a little hard at times because, you know, we, we always met at 7, you know. But it, it, it works and people get home earlier. Yeah. All of you will get home earlier as well as the, the staff is putting this production together and so on. It's worked out well for us. So. Perfect. Yeah, I like it. Okay. So um, if, if you do want to do that, then it's a bylaws change. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, the bylaws state um, that we meet on the third Tuesday at 7 o'clock. We can change that to we meet on the third Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. I can bring the bylaws with these revisions to our next meeting, and then we can start the 6.30 time in March, if that's okay. We realized um, the bylaws didn't, we didn't change the mission statement on the bylaws when we rewrote the mission statement back in, when Just, was that, June? I feel like it was summer, it was nice It was now. summer. Yes, so we have to change that as well. So I can bring the revised bylaws to the next meeting, if that's okay with everybody, including the time change and the mission statement. You can vote on that. So next month, seven o'clock, and then the following month. 630. 630. That's okay. Well, can we make a motion that we can just start at 6.30 you next can. time? Mm -hmm. Would you rather one. do it that way? 6.30 for February. For, we're making a motion for February. February, and then starting in March, we'll have the revised bylaws. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't be following our bylaws technically, okay. but if that's what you want to do, that's fine. We do that. Oh, we do time. also need to make the motion to change the day of Correct. the February. Of a February well. one, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. We can just do the time and change for that particular meeting. That would That's make sense. Idea. Okay. Wow. Um, do I have a motion? Can someone make a motion on that? Oh, I make a motion <laughs> to change the February meeting uh, to was it February 28th at 6.30 p.m. Yep. So we're, we'll be changing the meeting from February 21st, uh, 7 p.m. to the new date of February 28th, 7 p.m. I'll second. Wait, 7 or 6.30? 6 6 yeah. Oh, 6.30, yeah, oh, sorry. Sorry. Now I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> All those approve. Thank you. You're welcome. And then we have uh, uh, on items of new business, approval of $200 in petty cash for 2023. I think we skipped B, the Friends and Foundation Annual Grant Report. Oop, sorry. Yes. Uh, so we have the approval of Friends and Foundation of Rochester Public Library Annual Grant Report. So um, you, early in 2022, we were provided a grant um, by an anonymous donor, if you remember, for $8,000 towards right. supplemental materials, $8,111.20 specifically. And the report that we need to submit has to be approved by the board and signed by the um, board president. With this $8,000, we were able to purchase um, 431 printed books, 42 e-books, and nine audio books, not to, at, a, at a cost equal to a slightly exceeding $8,111.20. So we, we thank the FFRPL for administering this grant for us and helping us um, work through the process. Um, but we do need a board approval for the report, which is really kind of, we, we already bought these materials, so we just need you to say, yes, you know we did it. <laughs> yes, we know you did it. And <laughs> Jimmy I make makes a motion motions. that we approve. I second. second. There are seconds. Thank you. I'll approve. All right, now we're on to C, uh, approval of $200 in petty cash for 2023. 
I'll make a motion to approve it. Jennifer makes a motion. Second. Naraj makes a second. I'll approve. Thank you. Uh, we did D here where we amended the, the meeting, so we're okay there. Uh, on to E. Um, I think it was last year my, my company made a donation of, I don't know, it was fourteen fifty or twelve fifty. I can't remember the exact number. Fourteen fifty. Fourteen fifty. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> thought it would be a great time to start implementing those funds, especially with us making the changes to the kids' library. I know, uh, especially with the furniture. You know, one of the pieces my wife and I uh, really wanted to uh, have donated was just a rocking chair uh, as a supplemental piece. Um, working with my wife to uh, pick out the rocking chair, and I know the additional funds we wanted to use to purchase uh, additional toys. Rhonda had provided a, a wonderful list uh, that we can, you know, go over. Um, but just wanted to make sure. I don't think we had it approved as set aside for that, or there was a discussion when you brought it to the board. I wasn't hired yet. I wasn't here. Um, but in the minutes, it simply said a discussion, but nobody actually said yes. We'll spend fourteen fifty on a rocking chair and assorted toys, which is probably what we should do. Okay. I think the rocking chair was, your wife was looking into it with Barbara yeah. at the Giggly Pig. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they had a variety of different ones to choose from. So. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll work with her to, to figure out what exactly <laughs> that chair that she would like. So with rocking chairs, just please try to keep in mind that we have toddlers walking around with their fingers and their yep. toes and, mm -hmm. you know, it has to be a safe yeah. um, situation for us. I know the children's librarians are hoping that um, you will consider um, they picked out a potential puppet theater. There was an old puppet theater, but we really couldn't use it. It was just um, too broken and um, the wood was too sharp and there were nails sticking out, so we did have to uh, dispose of it. But they did pick out a puppet theater. It costs about $500. They want a puppet tree, if possible. That costs about $250. Um, if you don't like those ideas, there. if you go into the children's room, you'll look around, you'll see that we do need toys. Um, we have a, a kitchen that was purchased about 10 years ago. It's decent condition. We have a a train track table um, that's really quite worn, really worn. Um, it it's is. heavily used, and we could really use a new one, um, maybe an art center. There are just so many possibilities. Um, you tell us what you want. We, we'll go out and buy it. You know, you can approve the funding. We can buy anything you want with your direction. But it is easier if you let us buy it because the funds are in the account. Correct. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Want to think about it another month? Yeah, let's think about it one more month. Just wanted to get it on the agenda, though. <laughs> Ask your wife <laughs> we'll do. before you come back. <laughs> <laughs> Just a word of advice. Exactly. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> continuing. Um, is there any? Oh, yeah. Continuing business. I don't think we have any continuing business. Uh, claim uh, payment uh, appointment uh, auditor. Who was the auditor for this past month? Judy. Judy. I was the auditor. I would like to um, propose a um, that we approve eleven thousand two hundred forty-one dollars and fifty-seven cents for this month's vouchers. I'll second. Judy seconds. All in favor. And then for February and March, who would the auditors be then? I'm February. Okay. So alphabetically, who's after me? Okay. And CC, who's next? Uh, let me look I think at you're the next, one. right? I'm MCC, so you're NYA. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right? Anyone. Is it um, what are you? Megan? Megan, well, we could do Megan if you want to. If you wanted to. Well, if we were going on for No, she didn't. Griffin. Oh, she's sorry. <laughs> Megan did it last month. Oh. Megan did it last month, yeah. Okay. Don't pay attention to me. Is that good? Me. Yeah, I'll do if, March. Okay. <laughs> if you, um, do you want him to come with me for February just to see how to do it? You'll teach no, him. No, he doesn't have to. Okay. 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 We'll make work out an arrangement, yeah. Perfect. It's pretty easy. It is pretty easy. 
I can do it. It's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as far as fourth grade. Yeah, that's it. They stopped you at fourth, fourth grade. grade math. That's it. <laughs> well, I think that concludes all the items on our agenda. Did I miss anything? Perfect. Do I have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Second. Harish seconds. All in favor? Guys, have it. Smoke. Meeting's over.